Hey, mighty companions, it's time for face on Facebook Live. It's time for the way of mastery. So let's get it going. Welcome to the way of mastery. 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 Welcome to the way of mastery on Facebook Live. We're on Facebook Live, and I am Earl Raj Purdy. Earl Purdy. We're going to do. We're going to do the way of mastery. Yes, we are. <clears throat> and we're going to be doing the primary characteristic of mastery. That's what we're going to talk about. What is the primary characteristic of mastery? The primary characteristic of mastery. It's on page 73. Page 73. <clears throat> In the way of mastery, page 73. In the way of the heart, page 73. <clears throat> In the way of the heart, lesson six. Lesson six, in the way of the heart, in the way of mastery. On page 73, we're going to be doing the primary characteristic of mastery. It's, it's going to be an incredible section to do. So we're going to do the primary characteristic of mastery on page 73. I'm Earl Purdy. I want to welcome my mighty companions that are joining me live. <clears throat> I want to thank you for tuning in. And we are going to go really deep and let yourself hear it. Let yourself hear it. Remember only this. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. You may actively resist some of the ideas. Some of the ideas you may find, some of the ideas hard to believe, hard to believe. You may find some of the ideas quite startling. You may find some of the ideas quite startling. <clears throat> You are not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. It's not about analyzing the ideas. It's about allowing yourself, allowing yourself to just remember the ideas. Just remember the ideas. The first stage is just remembering the ideas and using the ideas because the use of the ideas will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas <clears throat> will give the ideas <clears throat> meaning to you and will show you that they're true. My ego is trying to mess with my throat. So we're going to go deep and don't try to analyze these ideas and figure these ideas out. It will only slow you down. What you want to do is, first of all, you want to let yourself hear the ideas before you try to break them apart. 
So I'm going to read through the first paragraph, page 73, In the Way of the Heart, Lesson 6, The Primary Characteristic of Mastery. What is the primary characteristic of mastery? Fearlessness, fearlessness, fearlessness is the primary characteristic of mastery is fearlessness. Not being afraid, that is the main characteristic of mastery. <clears throat> A master, let me go ahead and get my throat clear. <clears throat> okay. Fearlessness is the primary characteristic of mastery. Not being afraid is the primary characteristic of a master. Yes, it's easy to say just listen and hear the words because you can just listen and hear the words. That is easy to say because it's true. Just let yourself listen and hear the words. The first characteristic of mastery is fearlessness. The first characteristic, the main characteristic of mastery is fearlessness. So mastery is not having great power to make things happen. Mastery is not having the great power to make things happen. So when we're talking about mastery, we're not talking about your ability to manifest things. In the way of mastery, we're not talking about your ability to manifest stuff. Mastery is only the recognition that what is true always and there is no other choice. I'll say it again. Mastery is only the recognition that what is true always, and there is no other choice. There is no other choice but the truth. There is no other choice. There's no other choice but the truth. Free will does not mean that you have the right to believe that you can succeed at being other than what God created you to be. Free will doesn't mean <clears throat> that you have the right to believe that you can succeed at being other than what God created you to be. Free will does not mean that you have the right to believe that you can succeed at being other than what God created you to be. You cannot succeed in being anything other than what your creator created you to be. You cannot be anything other than what your creator created you to be. You cannot be anything other than what you were created to be by your creator. <clears throat> Having free will Having free will does not mean that you can elect not to take the only curriculum that life is offering to you in every moment. Having free will does not mean that you can elect not to take the only curriculum that life is offering to you in every moment. Free will doesn't mean that you can elect not to take your curriculum. Saying you have free will does not mean you can choose not to learn your spiritual lessons. Having free will does not mean that you can choose not to take the only curriculum that life is offering you in every moment. You don't have a choice but to take the curriculum that life is offering you in this very moment. You don't have a choice. <clears throat> not to take the only curriculum that life is offering you in every moment. See, in every moment, what is life offering you? It's offering you your awakening curriculum. Having free will means, so what does having free will means? What does it mean to have free will? We hear that all the time, we have free will. According to the way of mastery, what does it mean to have free will? 
it means that you do have the right to put what you are going to learn off yet another day. Free will means that you can choose to delay yourself as long as you want to. You can try to put off learning your spiritual lessons as long as you want to. You have the free will. You have free will in the sense that you, it's up to you to elect when you're going to learn your spiritual curriculum. There's a spiritual curriculum that's specially tailor-made to you and for your life. And free will only means that you can elect how much of that curriculum you want to learn at any given time. But you don't have any choice about the curriculum that you're going to learn. You're going to learn to remove every block to the awareness of God. You're going to learn to remove every block to the awareness of love. You're going to learn to remove every block to the awareness of your abundance and your happiness. You're going to learn your curriculum. And there's a curriculum that has been set up by the divine for you. And you don't have any choice about what that curriculum is. But you do have a choice about when you elect to take the curriculum, when you elect to focus in on the curriculum. So in each time you put your curriculum off, every time you, you don't focus in on the divine plan, you are just suffering in your slumber. It says right here, and each time you put it off, you slumber in your suffering. So what does a person do when they're not ready to learn their spiritual curriculum? They suffer. Suffering is a result of not being willing to learn your curriculum. Suffering and pain comes from your refusal to focus in on your spiritual curriculum. Suffering and pain comes from a person's refusal to focus on God. Suffering and pain comes from a person's refusal to focus on the truth. Pain and suffering comes from a refusal to focus on the divine plan. Pain and suffering comes from a person's refusal to focus their attention on their spiritual awakening and personal growth. Free will doesn't mean that you can choose not to learn your spiritual lessons. Free will doesn't even mean that you're the one that sets up your spiritual lessons. Free will means you have the right, you have the ability to, to decide how much of your spiritual lessons you want to learn at any given time. And if you choose not, if you choose not to focus in on your spiritual curriculum, the way a master says, you slumber in your suffering. So how can you tell when you're not doing what you're supposed to do at a spiritual level? You suffer, you go through pain. And it's not God that's causing the pain. It's not God that's punishing you. It's not the universe that's punishing you. You're just suffering because you're refusing to focus in on your divine plan, your personal curriculum that spirit has set up for you. But when you elect to take the only curriculum that matters, when you finally are ready to focus on what really matters, when you're finally ready to focus in on what really matters, when, you, when you're ready to give your attention to God and truth, and you're ready to focus on what really matters, that's when your suffering starts to reside. But when you elect to take the only curriculum that matters, it says, but when you elect to take the only curriculum that matters, when you elect to use the power of your free will, when you choose to use the power of your free will, you must choose to use the power of your free will to say, use the power of your free will to say, <clears throat> use the power of your free will to say, now from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. Now from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. Now from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. So take those to everybody that's watching. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on saying what we're being told to say together. And what we're being told to say is that 
Now, from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. So be willing, be willing to tell yourself right now, take a breath, those of you who are willing to do what the way of mastery says. Let's do it together as mighty companions. Let's do what it's saying. So now we must say together, now from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. Now from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. Now, from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. So make the statement, make the statement that now, now, from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. No more gain. No more games, no more dreams, because a dream is something that is not real and not true, and we want reality. We want real love. So we are going to say, no more games, no more dreams. I am committed, say it to yourself, I am committed to being only the presence of love. I am committed to being only the presence of love. I am committed to being only the presence of love. You are committed to being only the presence of love. Take a breath and say it. I am committed to being only the presence of love. I am committed to being only the presence of love. I am committed to being only the presence of love. For that is the truth of who I am. For that is the truth of who you are. For that is the truth of who you are. So what is the truth of who you are? You are the presence of love. That's who you are. No matter what else you think about yourself, no matter what else you believe about yourself, no matter what else you feel about yourself, who are you? What are you? You are the presence of love. That's who you truly are. You are the presence of love. That is what you truly are. You are the presence of love. You are the presence of love. That's what you truly are. You are the presence of love. You are the presence of love. So I'm going to say it one more time. Now, from this moment on, you will no longer tolerate error in yourself. No more games, no more dreams, no more games, no more dreams. I am committed to being only the presence of love. I am committed to being only the presence of love. <clears throat> You are committed to being only the presence of love, for that is the truth of who you are. So, the way a master says, it doesn't matter the opinions of others. So the, the opinions of other people do not matter. For a master, if a master doesn't care about the opinions of others, a true master does not give any power to the opinions of others who are yet resisting that decision. So what does that say to me? It, it says to me that the way a master is telling me, I shouldn't even listen to somebody who's not on the spiritual path. 
somebody who's not trying to be more loving, more caring, more kind, more responsible. Someone that's not trying to make a connection with the source. That, that the one person, that the type of people that you should care the least about their opinions are people who are judgmental, people who are fearful, people who are guilty, people who are angry, people who project, people who don't see themselves as loving and kind and lovable. Those are people who don't know what the truth is. And people who don't know what the truth is because they're just plain mean and petty and judgmental, that is a person that's resisting the decision to be the presence of love. That's a person who's resisting the teachings of the way of mastery, for instance. And it's saying it doesn't matter. The opinions of others who are yet resisting the decision to be more loving, the, those people's opinions should matter the least to you. In other words, don't listen to people who are mean and cruel and judgmental. Don't care anything about what unconscious, fearful, angry, guilty people say or what they believe or their opinions. Then, indeed, all things on the heaven and earth move to support you. Because if you are not focused in on the opinions of people who don't really matter because they're not loving, then, indeed, all things on the heaven and earth move to support you. What does that mean? It means that all things on the heaven and earth move to support you, to guide you to the right person, to guide you to the right place, to guide you to the right book, to guide you to the right sunrise, to gain you to the right meadow, in order to assist you in dropping the shackles of the obstacles to the presence of love that you have created as an idol and as a substitute to love. So that's, that's a lot in one paragraph. So let's break that down. Okay. Number one, <clears throat> if you recognize that the opinions of other people who are not trying to grow and wake up on the spiritual path, the opinions of those people should matter. And then the ones you don't let the opinions of people who are unconscious matter because you're determined to be the presence of love. The way of master says everything under heaven and earth will start to support you, that you will be led to the right people, to the right places, to the right situations, and to the right circumstances, that you will have a ton of assistance in dropping the obstacles to the presence of love and the obstacles that you have created as an idol, which is a substitute for love. Anything that's more important to you than love, anything that's more important to you than love, anything that matters more to you than love, anything that matters more to you than God, and God is love. God is the creator. If there's anything that matters to you more than your relationship to God, if there's anything that matters you, to you more than your relationship to love, that is your obstacle. That is your idol. If your grievance means more to you than being loving, if your fear means more to you than being loving, then if your anger is more important to you than being peaceful and loving, then that's your idol. That's your block to recognizing that you are the presence of love. But the once you make the decision that you are no longer going to let the opinions of unconscious, fearful people matter to you, then everything, the universe, rushes to your aid to support you in every way. That's why when you truly pray, and how do you truly pray? You pray from the depth of your soul. Pray from the depth of your soul. How do you pray? You pray from the depth of your soul. And you say, <clears throat> God bring me home. This is not a course in miracles class. This is a way of mastery, the way of mastery. The course in miracles is on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time and on Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. This is the way of mastery. And it says, that is why when you truly pray from the depth of your soul, God bring me home. God bring me home. 
God, bring me home. Pray from the depth of your soul. God, bring me home. The reason why I do what the the way a master says as we go through it, it's because we know that's probably going to be the only time that we really do what it says sometimes. So let's say it together. God, bring me home. God, bring me home. God, bring me home. Say it from the depth of your soul. God, bring me home. 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 Say it to yourself. God, bring me home. 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 Me home is the same as saying, Love, bring me home. Love, bring me home. Love, bring me home. Bring me home. Love, bring me home. Bring me home. Ask God to bring you home. You may rest assured, you may rest assured from that moment on. It is fine to trust every little thing that unfolds. If you say, God, bring me home, then what do you do next? You've got to trust that everything that unfolds in your life from this moment on is part of your awakening. If you say, God, take over, God, bring me home, then the way of mastery says, at that moment, from that moment on, it's fine to trust every little thing that unfolds everything that unfolds all things are lessons that god would have you learn all things are lessons that god would have you learn all things are lessons that god would have you learn <clears throat> all things are lessons that god would have you learn and though you see it not though you don't see it what you call angels. Do you know that what you call angels, angels are just friends that simply do not have bodies. So what is an angel? Angels are friends that do not have bodies. Angels are our friends that do not have bodies. Angels are your friends that are out of the body. Angels are your friends that simply do not have bodies. Angels are your friends. That's what it says. Angels are friends. Angels are friends that simply do not have bodies. Angels are friends that do not have bodies. Angels are rushing about. Angels are rushing around you. Angels are supporting you. <clears throat> Why are angels rushing about supporting you? Because you have given the command. Angels are surrounding you because you have given the command. And this is the command. Are you ready for angels to support you? Are you ready for your friends that don't have bodies to support you? This is what you say. It's right here. It's right here on uh, page 73. And it says, <clears throat> are you ready, mighty companions? Okay, it says, yes. Yes, I accept your presence in my life. Right now, say this to the angels so that they can support you even more. Say this right now. Don't try to analyze it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't, wear, don't be concerned if you have doubts. Just say this. Say this. Say this. Yes, I accept your presence in my life. Yes, I accept your presence in my life. Say that to the angels. The angels are your friends who don't have bodies. Say, yes, 
I accept your presence in my life. I turn the whole thing over. Would you mind thinking of something right now that you know you've been giving yourself some fear and stress about? Something you've been worrying about? Something you've been concerned about? And say, I turn the whole thing over. I turn the whole thing over. You know what I'm talking about. It may be a relationship. It may be a health situation, a financial situation, a spiritual situation. Say, I turn the whole thing over. I turn the whole thing over. I turn the whole thing over. And then what you say next is... Now each moment is dedicated to healing and awakening. Now each moment is dedicated to healing and awakening. Now each moment is dedicated to healing and awakening. The illusory sense, the illusory sense of separation from God that I once, that once I created in error. So say to the angels, yes, I accept your presence in my life. I turn the whole thing over. Now each moment is dedicated to healing and awakening. Now each moment is dedicated to healing and awakening. The illusory sense of separation from God that once I created in error. So are you ready to call on the angels who are just your friends who do not have bodies? Angels are just your friends that do not have bodies. Are you ready? Yes, I accept your presence in my life. I turn the whole thing over. Now, Each moment is dedicated to healing and awakening the illusory sense of separation from God that once I created in error. So in how many ways have you sought love? How many ways have you been looking for love? How many ways have you been seeking for love? Would you dare try to count each little pebble of sand on the beaches of this planet? Would you try to count each pebble of sand on the beaches of this planet? Each and every soul has already tried to seek out love in that many ways, if not more. The way of Master says, we have sought love in more ways than there are pebbles of sand on all the beaches in this world that we have sought love and have been seeking for love in more ways than there are sand pebbles on the earth that's a lot he says you the the way a master says you've sought love in a million forms you've sought love in a million ways you have sought love in millions of ways You have sought love in a million forms in which you already knew that you couldn't find it. Do you hear what the way of master is saying? It says we have actually been seeking for love and happiness in ways that we knew that we were not going to find it. Now I'm going to give you a tip that could save you years and years of effort. It's not something that most people want to hear, but that's okay. I can't let that matter. I'm going to say it. If you seek for love outside yourself, you will never find it. If you seek for love outside yourself, you will never find it. If you seek for love outside yourself, you will never find it. If you seek for love outside yourself, you will never find it. If you seek for love inside yourself, you will find it. If you seek for love inside yourself, you will find it. It says, 
you have sought love in a million forms in which you already knew that you could not find it. All because you wanted to perpetuate the insane attempt to try to separate yourself from God. So what did we just hear? It says that people may not realize it, but they're looking for love in all the wrong places because they're trying to keep their separation from God, who is love. So whether you believe it or not, when you seek for love outside yourself, it's because you're actually trying to perpetuate your separation from love, which is God. There is a fear of God, and the fear of God is the fear of love. The fear of God is the fear of love. And if you are afraid of God, if you are afraid of love, then you're going to look for love outside yourself. You're going to look for love where it is not located. Love that you are aware of, even though we all have love within us, you're not to seek it outside yourself. You seek it inside yourself, and then it's reflected back to you from outside yourself. So trying to separate yourself from God, trying to separate yourself from love, it is as futile as a sunbeam trying to separate itself from the sun, trying to separate yourself from God, trying to separate yourself from love is as futile as trying to separate wetness from water. So I'm going to look at some of the comments here. Irene says, <clears throat> the illusory sense of being separated from God. That's what we've got to get away from. The Mola says, there's a lot of seeking. Phoenix says, love is who we are. Kim says, I seek for love outside of myself. I'll never find it. I must seek inside of me. Phoenix says, love begins within. Thank you, Yeshua. King Lexi says, well, actually, she's watching us. Well, bless you. Latricia says, what page are we on? <laughs> we are on page 73 in the way of mastery. So when somebody asks what page it is, all right, someone else please let everybody know so that I don't have to break the train of thought. And uh, Irene says, the fear of God is the fear of love. <clears throat> a leader says, I am love reflector. I am a love reflector. That's the truth about us. That's the truth about us. That's the truth about us. Here we go. Indeed, beloved friends. Indeed, beloved friends, there is only one answer. Indeed, beloved friends, there is only one question. There's only one question you need to answer. There's only one question that you need to answer. And that one question that you need to answer is this. There's only one question that you need to answer. And that one question you need to answer is this. What am I choosing in this moment? What am I choosing in this moment? What are you choosing in this moment? What are you choosing in this moment? <clears throat> Ask yourself, what am I choosing in this moment? What am I choosing in this moment? What am I choosing? What are you 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 choosing in this moment? What have you given mastery over your life onto? What perception, what thought, what feeling are you letting rule you? Feeling merely flows from the thought or the perception you have chosen. Do you know that your feelings flow from the thoughts that you have chosen? Your feelings flow from the thoughts that you have chosen. Your feelings flow from the thoughts that you have chosen. Your feelings flow from the perception you have chosen. Your feelings are flowing. Your feelings are flowing from the way that you see things. Your feelings are coming from the way that you see things. Your feelings are coming from the thoughts that you 
think, your feelings are flowing from the thoughts that you think. <clears throat> what behavior, what action are you choosing in this moment? And does the, beha does the behavior, does the reaction that you have chosen in this moment, does it express the reality of your being? What you are expressing right now, is it, is it a reflection of the reality of your being? The reality of your being is that you are love. The reality of your being is that you are free. The reality of your being is that you are beautiful. The reality of your being is that you are innocent. The reality of your being is that you are abundant. The reality of your being is that you are abundant. The re How is your behavior? Is it reflecting the reality of your being? Are you being busy extending love? Are you being busy extending love? Are you being busy extending love? Did you hear me now? Are you being busy extending love? Are you being busy extending love? Are you being busy extending love? Or are you busying yourself fearfully? Are you busying yourself fearfully? Are you trying to grasp at what you think can give you love? Are you trying to grasp love? Are you trying to get love? Are you trying to manipulate love so that you don't lose it? So I want you to look. I want you to look well. I want you to look at your parents. I want you to look at your siblings and look at your mates and look at your friends. Look at your parents, even if they're still in the body or not. Look at your siblings, your brothers and sisters. Look at your mates and your partners. Look at your mates and your partners and your friends. Not one of them, not one of them holds the power to bring love to you. Your parents can't really bring love to you. Your siblings, your mates, your friends, none of them hold the power. None of them hold the power to bring love to you. So what are you trying to get from them? What are you trying to get from your friends? What are you trying to get from your mates? What are you trying to get from your parents? What are you trying to get from people? They don't have the power. They don't have the power to bring love to you. They don't have the power to bring love to you. So what are you trying to get from them? Why do you ever insist that another ought to conform to what you believe you need? Why do you insist that everybody needs to do what you think you need? It's futile. 100% futile. Absolutely. Positively futile to seek love in relationship with anything or anyone. It's futile, according to the way of Master, to seek love outside yourself in relationship with anything or anyone. It is, however, it is, however, listen to it very carefully, it is, however, it is, however, quite appropriate to extend love, extend love in each relationship. Stop trying to get love out of your relationships. Stop trying to get things out of other people. But it's quite appropriate, quite appropriate to extend love in each relationship, extend love with everyone, extend love with everything. But the extension of what love requires, but the extension of that love requires, the extension of real love requires that you have awakened to the truth that the only relationship that truly holds value, the only relationship that truly holds value, do you know that the only relationship that truly holds value is the relationship between you as the soul and God as your creator? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? The only relationship that's really valuable is the relationship between you and your creator is the only relationship that has value is the relationship between you and love. The only relationship that has any value is the relationship between you as a soul and God. I want you to imagine a light bulb in one of your fixtures. 
that looks out from his little filaments and says, well, I hope the person that just walked in the door is the right one. If I could just reach out and grab that person that just walked in the door, maybe my own light would come on. It's like the light bulb thinking that the person who walks into the room is holding the light. You are the light. Isn't it a lot easier to simply take the cord and plug the cord in the right socket? If there's no light, isn't it just, and it's somehow related to the cord not being plugged in, isn't it simply, isn't it a lot simpler to just take the cord and plug it in the right socket? How many times are you going to insist on trying to plug your cord into the wrong socket? How many times are you going to keep on insisting on trying to plug your cord into the wrong socket? I know I've tried to do that in the past. I've definitely tried to plug my cord in the wrong socket. That's for sure. How many times have you tried to plug your cord in the wrong socket? Or how many times have you been the socket trying to be plugged into by the wrong cord? Well, that one didn't work. I'll try this body, I'll try this person, I'll try this body, I'll try this person, uh, I'll try this career, I'll try this career. Uh, not getting very much juice from that either. And then you get angry. Then you get angry. You get angry because it's not giving you enough juice. You get angry. You get angry because this person or situation isn't giving you what you want. Or it gave you enough juice yesterday, but it's not giving you enough juice today. They seem to give you, give you a lot of love yesterday, but they're not giving you a lot of love today. So it must be their fault. See, the reason why I'm not experiencing happiness and the reason why I'm not experiencing love is uh, somebody else is not giving me the love that I desire. Or they are, they are not giving me the love and attention that they used to give me. That's trying to plug the wrong plug in the wrong socket. There is one little tiny socket into which you can plug your cord. It is the only one that it fits in. It is the only socket wired to bring you the flowing and living waters of grace. That socket dwells only within your heart. The real socket is the socket of your heart. The real socket is your socket. The real socket is your socket. Your only real socket is your socket. Your only real socket is your socket and it dwells only within your heart. It dwells only within your heart. Not the physical heart. I'm not talking about the physical heart, but that which is symbolized by the physical heart. I'm talking about the core of your very being. Plug into what? The core of your own very being. Plug into your own being. Plug. Would you be willing right now to plug into your own being? But how many times in each day do you check to see that that cord is plugged into your own being and that it's still plugged in? How many times? How many times do you remember to ask yourself, how many times do you remember to ask yourself, is my commitment to love, is this my commitment to fear? Is my commitment to love or is my commitment to fear? Is my commitment to love, is, is my commitment to fear? Is my commitment to love or is my commitment to fear? Are you committed to love or are you committed to fear? Are you committed to love? Are you committed to love or are you committed to fear? Are you committed to lack or are you committed to abundance? <clears throat> so what is fear? Fear is the act of disconnecting your cord from the only socket that can truly satisfy you. And that is the socket of your own heart. The socket of your own being it's the only socket that can satisfy you. Or are you running around trying to plug your cord into somebody else's socket or something else's socket? I would ask you to consider 
this one question. Consider this one question. As you look upon the whole of your experience, as you look upon your entire experience, I want to get you to ask yourself one question. Has it ever worked? Has it ever really worked? Has it ever really worked looking for someone else to make you completely happy or something outside yourself to make you completely happy or something else to make you completely happy? Has it ever worked to try to plug all of your energy and your cord in someone else's socket? Has it ever worked? In other words, try to imagine trying to hold flowing water in the palm of your hand by squeezing your fingers together. You can't hold water in the palm of your hand by squeezing your fingers together. So how much water would you be left with? Does not the water just run through your fingers when you try to squeeze water in your hand, no matter how hard you try? The water will find the holes. The water will flow away. You open your hand and there's not enough water left to really wet your tongue. Each time you've looked upon another person, whether it was a parent, whether it was a sibling, whether it was a friend, whether it was a mate, whether it was a teacher or whatever physical person or object, every time you tried to plug into their socket, every time you tried to plug into that socket to get the juice you believed that you needed, that's what you were doing. You were trying to it's the same as you trying to squeeze water in your hand and hold on to it. You literally end up squeezing the life out of the relationship. When you look for somebody else to validate you, when you look for somebody else to fulfill you, when you look for somebody else to love you more than you love yourself, it's like trying to squeeze water in your hand. It will never work. It, it, the, the truth is, you can always tell when your desires have come from you, <clears throat> your little self, and when your desires have not come from God. When your desires have come from your little self, whatever you achieved, whatever you got, did not satisfy you. Woo! I love this stuff. I love this stuff. When you seek first the kingdom and plug that cord into the socket within your heart, when you remember that you and your father are one, when you remember that only love is real and nothing else matters, you will remember that the temptation to find love outside yourself you're the temptation to try to find love outside yourself. The temptation to try to find love outside yourself is nothing more than an echo of an old habit. You're just in the old habit of seeking love outside yourself. And that habit of seeking love outside yourself, seeking happiness outside yourself, that old habit cannot continue to exist unless you feed it. Therefore, be the only habit that matters. What is the only habit that matters? The only habit that matters is the habit of remembering that the truth is true always. 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 Regardless of what is passing before your physical eyes, regardless of what you see, regardless of what you think, the truth is true always. And the truth is you are the presence of love. So do you know that in all comings and goings, do you know that in all births and all deaths, do you know in all arising and passing away of the universe after universe after universe, in the midst of a flat tire, or a sudden rainstorm. Nothing, nothing, listen to me now, nothing holds value except your relationship with your creator. Listen to me now, nothing holds value except your relationship with God. Have you experienced in relationship with anyone or anything a moment of bliss? Have you ever had a moment of bliss? A moment of peace that forever passes all understanding? A moment of fulfillment so sweet and so sublime that no word could touch it, much less express it? 
what you have experienced when you experience a bliss and a peace and a love beyond anything that you can describe that is only the flow of the love of God through you whenever you have felt any kind of bliss happiness peace with anyone or anything that was greater than anything you could even comprehend that was you experiencing the love of God through you that person that thing did not cause that love that bliss and that happiness that you were feeling you just use that person as a catalyst for you to feel the love and the happiness that was already in you and then you turn around and say the love came from them that they somehow caused you to feel so good nobody else is really doing that the, your happiness comes from you. Your love comes from you. It was caused because just for a moment, you had that bliss because just for a moment, you stepped out of your drama. Why don't you step out of your drama? You stepped out of your dream and so you felt so good because you stepped out of your dream. You felt so good because just for a moment, just for a moment, you stepped out of your drama and allowed the truth to be lived. Step out of your drama and allow the truth to be lived. Step out of your drama. Step out of your drama. Step out of your drama and I'll step out of your drama. Step out of your drama. Step out of your drama and allow the truth to be lived. Then after you experienced all that love, of course you tricked yourself. What did you trick yourself? How did you trick yourself? You tricked yourself into believing, God, that was so sweet. That was the best thing I ever tasted. It must have come from you. Get over here. I need you. That's how you trick yourself. You, 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 you feel the love within yourself. You're motivated to feel the love within yourself and you plug into the love of God. But if it happens when you're with someone, then you trick yourself. You trick yourself by telling yourself that good feeling, that love, that happiness must have come from you. So I have to have you. I've got to possess you. I have got to get you because I need you. If ever you believe you need anything or anyone, if ever you believe you need anything or anyone, outside of God, outside of the love and completeness within yourself, rest assured, in that moment that you think the love is being caused by something or the happiness is being caused by something or someone outside of you, in that moment you are living in delusion. Whatever you think that the happiness and the joy and peace is coming from anywhere, other than the God, the love inside of you, then you are living in delusion. What a powerful section. The primary characteristics of mastery. All right, I'm going to do a quick recap of that. Thank you for tuning in to this presentation that I'm giving you. I'm a full-time teacher and I would love it if you felt moved to give a financial expression of appreciation that you would go to my website www.earlperdy.com for any financial expression of appreciation as I am a full-time teacher. Also, I have been a sole purpose astrologer and numerologist for almost 40 years and studied the Course in Miracles for almost 40 years and New Thought for longer than that and have counseled with hundreds and hundreds of people. If you would like to have a session with me called a Clarity Session that would include my doing an astrological and numerological reading for you, if you're open to that, to help alleviate and get you past any blocks that you have because you're ready for the happiness you deserve, then go to my website. It explains my clarity sessions in detail on my website, www.earlperdy.com. 
and you can self book an appointment with me right there online and I have hundreds of class videos on my website that are free for you to listen to and audios on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time I do hardcore Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook Live. If you don't have Facebook, then just go to type in the Earl www.facebook.com forward slash Earl Purdy Live and you can watch my live broadcast www.facebook.com forward slash Earl Purdy Live. Uh, and then on Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, we have The Way of Mastery on Facebook Live. And Thursdays, 7 p.m. Mountain Time on Facebook Live on Earl Purdy page, we have Hardcore Course in Miracles, especially geared toward Course in Miracles students. And on 1 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, Mountain Time, I do another Facebook Live broadcast of A Course in Miracles before a live audience. So let's now, let's, Almighty Companions, I love that you've joined me live. And like Latricia says, God provides everything I need. Irene says, whenever you think happiness is coming from anything, bringing happiness outside of you, that's when you're making the mistake. Phoenix says, above all else, I need God and to get plugged in my source. And don't forget that the source is in your own heart. Stop plugging your cord in the wrong socket or stop being a socket that's allowing yourself to have the wrong cord trying to plug into you. Applying these ideas is profoundly healing. That's what Kwana says. And Deborah says, thank you so much for this lesson. I needed to hear this. You're welcome, Deborah." Clara says, wow, I just got on. Guess I will catch it later. That's right. There will be an immediate replay. As soon as I sign off, you'll be able to watch the whole thing. And thank you, Kim, for making people aware of how they can get in touch with me. You are a blessing. You are such a blessing. So let's finish up. Let's finish up. So the primary characteristic of mastery is fearlessness. That's the primary characteristic. Tell yourself from this moment on, you will not tolerate error in yourself. No more games, no more dreams, no more games, no more dreams. Then tell yourself that you are committed to being only the presence of love because that's the truth of who you are. You are committed. You are committed. You are committed to being only the presence of love. You are committed to be only the presence of love. For that is the truth of who you are. It doesn't matter. Don't, the opinions of people who are full of anger, guilt, and grievance doesn't matter. The opinions of others, it truly doesn't matter. People who are resisting the truth, people who don't have time for a spiritual path, who are full of thoughts of the world, their opinions do not matter. So when you truly pray from the depth of your soul and say this from the depth of your soul, God bring me home, 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 home. say it, God bring me home, God bring me home, God bring me home, God bring me home. 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 Love bring me home. Love bring me home. Love bring me home. Love bring me home. Truth bring me home. Truth bring me home. Truth bring me home. Truth bring me home. God bring me home. Say it to yourself now. God, bring me home. God, bring me home. Don't forget that angels are just friends without bodies. Don't forget that angels are just friends without bodies. So say to the angels, say to the angels, say to the angels, Yes, I accept your presence in my life. Yes, I accept your presence in my life. Yes, I accept your presence in my life. I turn the whole thing over. 
Whatever, whatever burden say, I turn the whole thing over. I turn the whole thing over. That's what you do. You turn it over. Stop seeking love outside of yourself. What are you choosing in this moment? Ask yourself. What am I choosing in this moment? Ask yourself. What am I choosing? What am I choosing? What am I choosing? What are you choosing? What are you choosing in this moment? Stop trying to plug your cord in the wrong socket. The only socket that's the real socket is the socket of your own soul, the socket of your own heart. Ask yourself, Ask yourself, am I committed to love or am I committed to fear? Is my commitment to love or is my commitment to fear? Ask yourself, is my, if my, am I committed to love or am I committed to fear? And then you go, I choose love. I choose love. So let's say it one more time, one more time, one more time. Remember that the happiness is coming from yourself. It's never coming from the other person. But it's okay to extend happiness. It's okay to extend love. But the only relationship that matters is your relationship with God, which is your relationship with love. So let's say it for one more minute. Let's go, God, bring me home. 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 Ask it from the depth of your soul right now. Take a breath. Take a breath. Feel it and say it. God, bring me home right now. Right now. God, bring me home right now. God, bring me home right now, right now. God, bring me home. God, bring me home right now, right now. God, bring me home. Say it to yourself. God, bring me home right now, right now. God, bring me home. It means love. Bring me home right now, right now. Love. Bring me home. Say it. Love. Bring me home. Right now. Right now. Love. Bring me home. Are you committed to love or are you committed to fear? Are you committed to love or are you committed to fear? Are you committed to love or are you committed to fear? You are the presence of love. You are the presence of love of love. I love you. Please share this video. Please, please, please share this video. You are blessings. Thank you for joining me, the Divine Repetition Teacher, Earl Purdy. And go over this section. Remember, the key is to remember and not forget. The key is to remember and not forget. The key is to remember and not forget. It's not about analyzing. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity, those who share with me on every level. I appreciate you.